I had my inverter on and running last night just to use a little bit of the power in the form of heat. And I was powering some incandescent light bulbs over in my shop. And I wake up this morning and I check the voltage and it's at 14.4 volts or 12.4, which is like the resting rate there, um, which is what it, it recovers to after shutting off at the kill point, which I set at 12 volts. And I look at this and the volts for the turbine is really low. So let's go see what's going on with that. And here's what we have. So it's on, it has water, oh, it's shaking a lot. Look at that. My 3D printed nozzle blew off. So I'm gonna shut off the high pressure because I don't know if there's anything bad with the spoons in there and then I'm gonna shut off the, the free flowing one there. And then I'm gonna step in here and I'm gonna tilt this up and look at it to make sure that it's not... Okay, see that? That broke off there. All of the spoons look okay. So I'm just gonna turn it on with the that brass nozzle. And the pressure is uh, going up as the bubbles come out. See it ticking up there a little bit at a time. So I'm going to turn this on with a single nozzle. And then it needs a little bit of a kick because it has a doesn't have full pressure right now. And we'll let that pressure build up as the penstock fills back up because it was sucking air. And there's air bubbles trapped in it. So uh, we're back in operation at limited capacity until I replace that jet with something else. Okay, I have a slight problem here, and so earlier the nozzle broke off, and, and now it's been fluctuating in voltage, and it's not actually been charging the battery, it's still stuck at 12.4. Even though it says it's in bulk MPPT, it's not, it doesn't have enough volts to work, so let's go look at the turbine and see what's going on. First thing I do is I look at the outflow to make sure there's actually water flowing out. We can see it coming out there. And then I'll open it up. And we're not getting full pressure. It's only at 100 PSI, so it's not spinning up all the way. So I'm going to shut this off, and we're going to see if bubbles come out of the top. It looks like this whole thing is rotated, too. i got to fix it. These fittings are a little bit compliant, so things can move around and not just snap off immediately. Also, it looks like last night, you see the blue there on the blocks? When that nozzle broke off, that was letting the, the whole thing was just shaking back and forth. It's moving a little bit. Those are bubbles coming out of the top of the pipe. It's a, a weird case where there's enough flow to keep the bubble down. Normally there's not enough flow so the bubbles float up or there's too much flow so the bubbles float down. But in this case the bubbles are just kind of stagnant and caught in the middle. And I presume that's near the top of the system. You see it's filling up pretty quick. We have plenty of water. And the barrel's going to be full at the top, too. Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to let that settle up. Let's get the 
nozzle out of there and see what happened. Okay, here's the nozzle that I 3D printed out of PETG. And it's not really a failure at layer lines. I mean, it sort of is. Most 3D prints do fail at layer, layer lines, but not completely. So it's, it's pretty good bonding. And here's the other side of it. So you can see it's actually kind of shiny in there too. And I did drill out the tip with a tapered drill bit a little bit. You can kind of see that at the tip right there. So if I do this again, I just know that I need to increase the thickness of the wall there and maybe add a, a radius down at the bottom because I think it might have failed where the flat surface here met the threads. And that's what is called a stress riser with a sharp corner. So, whoops, there it goes. Uh, this is the nozzle that I'm going to replace it with. Uh, we had a lot of rain, so I know the spring is flowing really well. So I'm going to put this one in place of that nozzle, and that nozzle is going to be now the small nozzle that goes to this extra one after the 90. Okay, I'm just checking the jet alignment here. And it's a little bit difficult for the phone to focus on like I can. And we can, well, let me move my foot a little bit so I'm more comfortable. All right, there we go. You can see that there's water shooting off away from it. So we're getting a little bit of bypass, and I think that's because the the pex here is bending the whole thing away. Let's see if I if I flex it, it changes a little bit. Uh, so let's shut that one off, and we'll try the other one too, this one here. Come on, focus on the right thing. Okay. So that one's pretty good. It's shooting off. Uh... It's hard to tell if it's just one stream or two. So I, I don't know if that alignment's good. So my idea for alignment is I'm going to cut a larger hole here and then put this on another plate. And the plate that I'm going to have is going to be slotted in one direction and the mount is going to be slotted in the other direction. And then we have adjuster bolts on it that can move the plate up and down, left and right to fix the jet alignment. I'm also gonna, at least for this temporary version, I'm gonna put in the corner braces for PEX that makes it a sharp 90, so that'll remove the stress of the PEX being bent on this. So that should fix a lot of the problems. Make sure those guys are not touching or close to each other. Make sure this, these wires here are not touching the rotor. There's a good gap there. And then I can I'm going to turn on the big jet here. It should work really well. And then I'll turn on the small jet. There's a lot of, a lot of water splashing back there. shut those off so that I can get out of here without risk of electroc electrocution or dismemberment by a giant spinning fan blade. Because uh, I don't 
trust myself sometimes. Also, I, I had on the bottom of it a uh, rubber, like window seal stuff. Um, but I think last night when the nozzle blew off, it filled the housing too much with water and that kind of dislodged the, uh, the foam there. Because we know how much force there is in that three quarter for sure. All right, so I'm gonna turn these back on. We'll go back inside and look at and see what it's doing. And they were at 200. And, what was that? 240 watts. Let me. Uh, we'll do a full sweep and see what it does. All right, so that could that'll let it go open circuit. Our open circuit is going really high. <laughs> this is only a 200 volt midnight controller, so yeah. All right, let's turn this back on. Mode on. Sorry, I, I realized in the last one I was holding the phone too far away from it. And it was hard to see. So it's doing its voltage sweep now. Finding the optimum power point and then it will return. And the batteries are full. <laughs> I need a bigger battery bank. I need to do a 48 volt battery bank for sure. Okay, well I'm going to turn some loads on and hopefully we'll get back into bulk. And we're going to peek out here. I have the... Yep, there we are. We're at peak. 274 watts. 289. Somewhere in there. So 289 is the highest I've seen. I don't know what the nozzles are flowing. That's probably... Uh, a lot of water flowing out there and I have my loads are pulling 7 amps so that's 13 amps going into the battery right now amp limit <laughs> yeah okay so the the volts coming in here Increasing even more with additional water shows that there's just a lot of friction out there um, So the the jet velocity should be the same regardless of the nozzle But with the volts increasing so high that leads me to believe that there's a lot of friction in there that Each additional amount of water is overcoming more friction to get the turbine up to uh, like a steady state if you guys uh, understand what I'm saying. So that would be uh, friction uh, or jet alignment inefficiencies. Again, something that I need to address. So that's where we are. Uh, it's working. It's making power. It's not efficient. The amount of flow we're getting out of it should be um, up around a thousand watts, really, I believe, right now. Here's my thermal camera. We can see that my charge controller there is pretty warm. The wires coming in, though it's just one wire paired up, it's pretty warm. There's the charge wires. We can see how it's wired in parallel with a cross post wiring set up. So both batteries are loaded equally with the balance leads between. And we can see that the wires are pretty warm. Oh, that's a GFCI. Actually, all of those are GFCI because technically this is garage, and garage needs GFCI protection. Uh, so these wires, on the left we can see the three-phase coming in, and the DC coming out. There's a rectifier. It's getting pretty toasty warm. I need to add some additional cooling on that. I have some fat heat sinks I can put on. And then there's the charge controller itself. The Midnight Classic. So I ordered... Uh, four gauge wires, these are just 12 gauge right now. I, I ordered four gauge wires from Windy Nation. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to the ones that I got specifically. 
and I'll be putting in some better wires uh, for this very soon. They should be here in a few days. And then I can test with a little bit higher loads uh, and then maybe work on trying to sort out the efficiency of the jet and whatever the heck it's doing. And here are the four lights I have putting heat into the shop. I have two incandescents in the middle and two LED bulbs. Just heating my shop because it's winter and we have to do something with the energy. We're not yet quite set up to harness. Additionally, again, all temporary stuff. This charge controller, charge controller is only good for 10 amps. Uh, link in the description for what that one is. So that's 10 amps going to an uh, inverter. 10 amps at 12 volts is 120 watts maximum. Um, so I can only pull off 120 watts even though we're making 260 watts right now. And part of that is I have that acting as... There's no solar coming into it. I have that acting as a low voltage disconnect. So it protects the batteries like last night when the nozzle blew off. It protects the batteries from going too low. Even though that has a low voltage disconnect, this um, is set to a higher, safer, longer life battery disconnect voltage. I have a 100 amp Victron uh, low voltage disconnect coming, so I should be able to wire that up with a proper uh, thousand watt inverter and actually run things off of this system.